How did you get involved with you know creating this comic, writing the comic, or being involved with the well, comic? Well, I, I and, produced. And with the I guys. produced it. it. Okay. Uh, and so I've got the Bill Paxton presents credit, and the Alfred Hitchcock presents. But uh, the script is a great script that was written by a colleague and a friend of mine named John McLaughlin. He wrote Hitchcock, the movie that was made last year, and he uh, was one of the writers on Black Swan. He's written a lot of stuff. He's also been hired by Legendary with me uh, for, on Kung Fu, uh, which we're doing. But this was a spec script. You know, a spec script is a script that you write in the hopes of selling and producing it. He normally works as a hired gun. But uh, this is a script he wrote. Uh, it was a personal story to him. Weirdly enough, the character of Bob Rourke, the protagonist who's in this, in this contemporary story, and he's also in this spaghetti western, you know, the movie, the, the book and the story goes back and forth. He was actually a guy that, he was uh, uh, John's brother-in-law, and he died, and he succumbed a couple of years ago, but he was one of the most macho guys this guy ever knew, and, and uh, John's kind of the James character, the kind of meek brother-in-law, who kind of works as a book clerk. So, uh, I, when I read this screenplay, I thought this is one of the best screenplays I've ever written, I'd, I'd ever read. And I thought, God, I'd, I'd love to make it into a movie, but I was thinking, well, you know, maybe, a, what if we turn it into a graphic novel? Mick Reinman, the artist who did all the artwork for Seven Holes for Air, is an old, another old colleague and friend. We live up near each other in Ojai, California. and. Uh, He's a very masculine artist, a great figurative artist, and this needed a real masculine feel. The story is, is very butch and kind of men's only kind of a thing. And uh, so I, I, I approached Mick to do it, and he did, it took him about two years to do all the drawings. He was moonlighting on the side. He's, uh, he's a professor of art at, at uh, University of California, Channel Islands. So. I, uh, I put this thing together and uh, it just took a long time, but uh, I, I, I thought if I never get to make this into a movie, I want it to exist so people can still enjoy it. So I'm really pleased with how it came about and how it's turned out. Developing this into a film, is that something you'd still be interested in? Very much so. Okay. And so at least it exists as, uh, as something people can buy and enjoy. But it's also a, a great, a great tool for me to go to a studio with now, and sh and they can literally see the movie, pretty much. Yeah, and a lot of people do that. You know, Joe Kerninski did that with uh, uh, Oblivion. It was a comic book that he had developed, yeah, uh, and I got to meet it. him at the London premiere of Oblivion. Uh, Tom Cruise introduced me to him, and I really dug him. He's a humble guy, but he told me how he had developed it as a graphic novel first. Yeah, it's kind of a smart thing to do now. I mean. Hollywood's kind of gone gaga over graphic novels. You know, they love, you know, they, they see it as a resource, something they can show, you know, and, uh, but I thought this would be a cool way to do this. You mentioned uh, Tom Cruise. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Edge of Tomorrow because yeah. that has a presence here at the convention this yes, weekend they're as gonna well. Show, they're going to show the first, um, first trailer for it. It's very early days, but I've seen a lot of the film. Uh, Doug Lyman's done a sublime job. And it's it's insanely entertaining. What was it like for you working with Doug? Uh, great. I, I I just knew his work. I didn't know him personally, but I found him to be compassionate and supportive, and he really liked what I was doing with the character. So he just completely egged me on, and I felt completely supported. And, and same with Tom Cruise. I'd known Tom peripherally over the years. You know, we you know we're kind of both journeymen. And I, he was still, he was great, total pros pro, and super, uh, a real cheerleader, you know, he really got behind me and uh, said, oh, you're killing it, you know. And he seemed to be a great leader, he know, you know, when you're number one on the call sheet, you, you got to be number one. Yeah. A lot of actors don't realize that, but he, he gets it, and uh, we, I've enjoyed getting to know him. Well, well, can you tell me anything about your role, what kind of character you play? Yeah, it's a, it's a war against an alien infestation where the worlds come together, you know, and uh, I play a, a platoon sergeant from Science Hill, Kentucky, and he ends up in my platoon, and I, I, I saw, for all this person, I've been given an order that he's a deserter, he's been impersonating an officer, impersonating a major, so I, I and, and I, and the order says that he's a coward, 
So I'm only too happy to give him his first taste of real combat. And we're gonna, we stage kind of a Normandy invasion from England to try to retake uh, Europe. It's almost like the Nazis in World War II, they've taken Europe. These, these uh, creatures, they have no, they're not trying to communicate. It's more like an infestation. So we go over there, but he has to, he keeps dying in battle and he, get, and he gets, and he has to be reborn to fight again. And, it's a weird kind of almost a, kind of like a Groundhog Day kind of a thing. Yeah. But it, it's a cool movie because like Seven Holes for Air, it's kind of got its own rules. And as the audience and the viewer learns the rules, it becomes kind of a cool thing. I think if you can, so many films screw that up. They suddenly change the rules in the third act or something like that. And, you know, you set the rules up and, it, it, and it's in the world of the film so that the audience are into it, then they, they start to anticipate it. They feel like they're a part of it, they're in it. And this movie is insane in terms of what this character, his character has to go through. You mentioned Kung Fu. Is that the TV Kung, show? Yeah, the, yeah, the legendary, uh, I guess it got the rights from Warner TV to turn it in, they want to turn it into a new franchise, movie franchise, which obviously would spin off probably eventually into a new series. So I was hired by them, uh, by uh, Legendary, about a year and a half ago. I brought John McLaughlin in to write it, convinced them to, to hire him. And Mick Reinman, uh, the artist, so I, I kind of work with the same guys. He's been storyboarding it for about a year, so about two-thirds of the movie is storyboarded. And they like the script, so uh, I'm waiting for Legendary East to be up and running. They want to do this through that new flagship. It's going to be a kind of a flagship movie for their new new brand. And is that something you would direct yes, or appear I'll direct in? That. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would just direct it. Okay. I, I acted in Frailty and directed it, but that was a lot of work, and uh, I didn't do it with. I prefer if I'm directing to just just be focusing on that. Did you grow up on the TV show? Do you have an affiliation to that? Oh yeah, I grew up. Oh yeah. Uh, it was it was a huge international hit. It's still remembered very fondly, but uh, it's one of the, and, and uh, Kwai Chen King is one of the great, great action heroes in a way, he's, he's, uh, but he's also kind of more than that. He's a great kind of philosophical hero. So there's a soul to, to that that I think is lacking in a lot, in a lot of the, uh, a lot of the comic book movies. There's a little more depth there. His journey is, is uh, quite a journey and uh, I don't know there's a there's a there's a feeling like he's a guy who really is a pacifist uh, but you know you push him too far then he, he pulls down the shade and you know it's on so you're kind of waiting for him to you know you know a spring's gonna pop at some point it'll be hard to choose the fill uh, David Carradine very hard yeah to find an, a contemporary actor who can do that but I'm trying I want to find someone it will always be somebody of Chinese descent so, you know he's supposed to be you know, Chinese and American, and he's on a quest to find his father. That's part of the reason he's in the West, but he's also trying to escape the Dowager. He's, you know, he's gotten into an altercation. He's killed some royal guards, and they're after him. So uh, it's a great, it's a classic story, and I, I think it'll be embraced. And the and the and the, it still has a brand name, Kung Fu. So it's one of those things where you could really get the whole enchilada. You could bring in older and younger viewers. I think.